What is going on guys? It's Real Touch Gmail here back with another game maker tutorial. And today what we're going to be doing is looking at creating a pong game with game maker from scratch. Uh, now this is going to be lean more towards the beginners of game maker, you know, maybe you've just you've gotten into game maker, you've seen a couple of videos, you've seen the power of what game maker can do. And you really want to get into learning the coding side of it. Uh, you know, maybe go ahead and uh, get away from the drag and drop actions and all of that fun stuff. So this is going to be a good segue into going ahead and learning that code and all that stuff. So we're going to be using a very efficient way of uh, creating our Pong game. Now, what you're seeing on the screen is the final product of our game. So again, very, very basic. But again, you're going to be learning some stuff if you're a beginner because we're going to be using some non-conventional coding. Well, I mean, they're conventional, but... If you're a beginner, you know, this is going to be very foreign to you. So let's go ahead and begin. We're only going to need a total of, of, uh, of two objects for the game. Uh, we're going to need the paddle and the ball. Uh, and, you know, you might be telling yourself, well, there's got to be two paddles. Well, that's right. That's where we get into coding, how you can make things more efficient and all that stuff. We can actually use the same paddle object mm -mm. for both. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So what I went ahead and did was I created a paddle uh, sprite. So you know, SPR underscore paddle. That's a very conventional thing to do within Game Maker is to put SPR stands for sprite and OBJ for object in front of either your sprites or your objects. So you don't mix them up. So here I just went ahead and I'm no artist, but I went ahead and created a sprite and uh, I made it white for a reason. And, and the reason I made the sprite white is because actually we can go into game maker and we can colorize the paddles however we'd like so you see how I had white and then I had just kind of sort of like a gray uh, you know outline on the ends there game maker will go ahead and uh, color that for us whatever color we would like so uh, that's pretty cool um, and then we have our ball here which again is just a square and I put that white as well in case we wanted to color it you know you never know so that's a 16 by 16 and uh, the paddle is a 16 by 128 Right. So now one thing I have done, and this is very important with our coding. And if you don't do this, you're going to get something a little bit funky. But what I did is I set the origin to eight, uh, uh, eight X and 64 Y, which is exactly center of the sprite. You can just hit the center here and uh, it'll center it for you. But, uh, so I also did that with the ball as well. Now that doesn't mean you have to use the exact dimensions I, I used. So the 16 by 128, because we're going to be using uh, you know a inbuilt function called sprite height sprite width so it's going to automatically get the sprites width and height so you don't need to do 16 by 128 you can do 32 by 256 you know you can do whatever you can do 32 by 32 it doesn't really matter but uh, that's just what I used for my paddle alrighty so I also created a background real quick again I'm no artist I just you know kinda put a circle and an uncentered line through it kinda make that pong room so here I just went ahead and popped the background into the room here. I just went to the background, backgrounds tab and uh, set it to background zero. Um, one thing I also did in here though is in the settings, I set our speed to 60 and that's going to put our room speed to 60 FPS, essentially, uh, 60 steps per second. So um, again, I like to do this. You don't have to do that. Uh, that's just what I do. You know, I am using Game Maker Studio Professional Edition. So uh, if I didn't say that in the beginning, it should work if you're on eight or eight point one, even HTML five. You should be able to uh, go along with this tutorial pretty nicely. Maybe there might be one or two things that you need to switch around. But so there we go. So my my width and height of my room is six forty by four eighty. My speed is sixty, and uh, there you go. So. Let's get right into it. Let's go ahead and create an object here. And I'm just going to create obj underscore paddle. And I'm going to set the corresponding sprite. So there we go. I'm also going to make it a solid object. I mean, why not make it solid? So, all right. So for our paddle, what we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, in the create event, we're going to go to the control tab and execute some uh, piece of code here. All right. and. We're going to set up a couple variables for our paddle. First one is our speed and we're going to equal that to five. Okay. Now the speed, now I'm not, I notice how I put SPD equals five. Okay. That is just a variable name. We can't do that because that's an already an inbuilt variable within game maker and you'll, and you'll know if it's an inbuilt variable because it will highlight like that. 
So I'm just gonna put SPD, stands for speed. You can really name it whatever you'd like. Okay, so I'm gonna put speed equals five. Okay, and now I'm gonna map the keys. So key underscore up, and I'm going to equal this to uh, or W. And I know this is kind of confusing, but this is basically just setting this variable to our W key on our keyboard, right? And so now we need the same thing for key down. So key, key underscore down equals ORD S. So there we go. So now we've got the key down and the key up variable, which is basically just taking place of ORD W and ORD S. Now we need to put these ORD in, in front of here if we want to use like a letter off the keyboard. If we wanted to use like the arrow keys, we could do VK underscore up or down. And that's already inbuilt uh, into GameMaker. So they've already inbuilt the key codes into that. Or S and or W, that's again, just if you want letters, right? So we're gonna do one more thing and we're gonna set our color to equal C underscore blue, we'll say. Now these are all the player one stats, all right? So we have, we want our player one to be blue and we want their main key functions to be the W and S key on the keyboard because it's going to be a two player game, obviously. So W goes up, S goes down. Pretty simple. All right, so that's all you need in the create event. So now let's go ahead and step over to the step event here. And here's where it's going to get a little bit weird, but I think you can still hold on. So here we're going to go ahead and set up the actions. So the keys actually do something in the game. So we're going to create an if statement if, and we're going to say keyboard check. And in these parentheses here, you can see down here, it says keyboard check. It now requires a key. So this is just basically saying, if we hit a certain key, do this action. So here I'm just going to say key underscore up, which is basically saying if we hit our up key, which we already mapped in the create event, then I'm going to say y minus equals speed. Very simple. So now our y, our y uh, position coordinate is going to go up five pixels for every uh, step we hold down our up key, which is w. I hope that makes sense. So we can copy this, paste it down, and now we can just say key down, underscore down. And we could do not minus equals plus equals because a coordinate plane usually goes plus is up and negative is down. But with uh, Game Maker and most coding languages, uh, if you want to go up, it's minus on the uh, coordinate system, and if you want to go down, it's plus on the coordinate system. Now it's not flipped for the x and y or for the x. So x, if you want to go to the right, it's still plus equals. And if you want to go to the left, it's still minus equals. Now this whole thing about plus equals and minus equals, that's just, it's basically the same exact thing as saying y equals y plus speed. So we're just taking our y position, we're equaling it to itself, and then we're just adding five pixels or whatever that speed variable would hold. We're just adding that. So that's the same exact thing. Either, either way would work. It doesn't matter. You can, you can use either way. So let's go ahead and pop this guy in the room here. And let's go ahead and run it and let's see what happens. So let it compile. So as you can see, we have our guy in the room here. And if we hit the W key, oh, it goes up. And if we hit the S key, it goes down. So there you go. You now have a paddle going up and down. There is a slight problem though. Our paddle can move outside of the room, which I don't think you really want in our game. So we can simply fix this by clamping it. And that's another inbuilt very uh, function in game maker. So here we can set y to equal clamp. Now here we have three parameters we need to set. So our value is y, our minimum value. So basically what the clamp function does is it takes a minimum value and it takes a maximum value and it will not allow whatever variable you set to go under the minimum value and above the maximum value. It will not allow it. It will completely stop it. So for our minimum value, what we need to do is say sprite height 
divided by two. And that's gonna be our minimum value, okay? And I'll explain this a little bit more. Now our maximum value is going to be our room height minus, and in parentheses, our sprite height divided by two. And if we go ahead and run the game now, let it compile once again. As you can see, we can now not move past our y, our minimum value and our maximum values, right? So there you go. It, that is how you basically conceal that paddle into the room. Now, if this doesn't make sense, basically think of it like this. Here's our minimum value. Now, since we set our paddles origin to the center, it's now taking all of that information. That's technically where the Y is, is in that center value. So the reason we're not saying, okay, our minimum value is zero is because zero is technically right here on our paddle. So what would happen is we would, it would allow our paddle to go halfway outside of the map. All right. And the same thing with room height. Now it would allow our paddle to go halfway outside that map. I encourage you guys, if you don't understand that, take away sprite height and just put zero and take away this minus sprite height divided by two and just make it zero or, or room height. And you will see that it only goes halfway out and it should be explained by sprite height divided by two is going to get our exact center origin that we need. All right. So there we go. It is now clamped inside the room. One more thing we're going to need, and this is not um, required, although it is cool, and this is changing the color. So here we just say draw underscore sprite underscore ext, stands for extension. We set our sprite Im index, image index, x, y, one, one, zero. Now this is our color. We just say color, and our alpha is one. And that's basically it. Now, since our color is blue, here let's change it to let's change it to say purple. All right, and let's go ahead and run it now. As you can see, our paddle is now purple. How cool is that? All right, so now you may be wondering to yourself, how the heck are we going to be able to get a second paddle with a different color, with a, a different, um, you know, we could potentially have them different speeds, a different uh, key mapping system. So, you know, what if I want the guy on the right to use the arrow keys and I want the guy on the left to use the W and S key? Uh, you can't really do that because I can see if you're a beginner, it would be very, very difficult to try and understand how you would do that. Now that's because you probably don't know of a thing called creation codes. Now a creation code, I'll show you right here, is basically something you can change inside your room. So here we have our player one sprite, or our player one paddle, and our player two paddle. Now, all we have to do is right click inside the room and click creation code. And now this is basically an alternative creation uh, or create event for our paddle or for our object or whatever we want. So here we can change the values again. So here I'm gonna say key underscore up, and this is now gonna equal VK underscore up. Our key underscore down is now gonna equal V underscore down. And our color is going to equal C, um, what's a good color, orange. And just like that, we run the game. And whoa, now we have our left paddle controlled by the W and S keys and our right paddle controlled by the uh, up and down keys. And you know, the clamping all still works the same and all of it is golden. So that is basically very, very cool in Game Maker. I believe 8.1 and 8 also do this with the creation codes. I'm not sure if any version is below that. But basically, what a creation code does, and you can uh, change all of this in the room settings of how each one executes, but basically, 
the creation code overrides any create event that you have with your player. So if you have a creation code, it's going to override this create event. There we go. So uh, yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead now and create our ball. So I'm gonna say obj underscore ball. I'm gonna go ahead and set the sprite. And here's where it's gonna get a little bit tricky. Uh, now, again, like I was saying, I can go into a more advanced version of this Pong game if you, if I get enough requests for it. So basically, you know, if you guys want to see like cool like particle effects and how to you know maybe do power ups in the game and really get like a cool little version of Pong going, again, still very beginner friendly. Go ahead and let me know. All right, so. But now, right now, we're just going to be doing the basic collisions and all that stuff. So we're not going to be getting like ball angles and directions. And, you know, if it hits the outer paddle, it's going to uh, fly up more. Right now, it's just basically going back and forth and uh, not really much strategy the player has to kind of change the direction of the ball. It's really anywhere you hit it, it's just going to uh, reflect in the opposite direction. All right. So first thing we can do here is in the create event of our ball, we're going to set up two variables. And this is going to be h speed and v speed. Now not we're not using ee at the end because that's uh, we're going to be using that for the actual um, the actual speed of the ball. Th these are just sort of uh, temporary variables that we create to decide the ball speed. So here we're gonna say equals choose one, two, three. And the same thing with V speed, choose one, two, three. And this is basically in Game Maker, it's going to set this H speed to either one, two, or three. Same with the V speed, one, two, or three. So we don't know what this variable is. For us right now, it could either be one, two, or three, we don't know. And you can put whatever numbers you'd like in there, you know. So that, with that being said, now all we have to do is say h speed equals, and we're going to choose again, and we're going to say negative h speed or h speed, and v speed equals choose negative v speed or v speed. And what this is basically going to do is h speed equals either it's going to start off going in the left direction of either one, two, or three pixels per step, or in the right direction. Uh, either one, two, or three pixels per step, and same with the V speed, right? So that's very basic. You know, it's just a very random way of, uh, of you know, setting the ball in a random direction. A very yeah, just like I said. All right, so now let's go into the step event, and this is where all of the or most of the we got one more thing after this, but this is where most of the sort of meat of the ball object is going to lie. So here we're just gonna basically do the same thing we did before with our clamp. So we're just gonna check if the ball hits the upper part of the room or the lower part of the room because basically we don't want the ball to just go up and up and up and up and up. We kinda want it when it hits the edge of the room to reflect back down. So all, all we can do here is say if y is less than or equal to sprite height divided by two or so you can put now here you can put or the, the words, or you can do, uh, I don't even know what these things are called, um, but you can put these two things that are located right above the enter key if you hit shift, and, uh, and that also stands for or, and that's how you do it in other languages, uh, not including Game Maker. So um, yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing to know. Again, it's kind of like the semicolons. You don't need to put the semicolons at the end in Game Maker, but I encourage it because it's going to give you a good habit if you ever want to graduate from Game Maker. Maybe go on to something more uh, powerful, such as like C plus plus or something like that. All right. So we're going to say or y is greater than or equal to room height minus sprite underscore height divided by two. And the only thing we're going to do here, and we can put uh, brackets, and brackets basically say whatever, if any of those are true, do whatever is within the brackets, right? So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to say our V speed 
times equals negative one, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool little, I, if you call it algorithm or whatnot, but basically say uh, that's basic math right there. So if the V speed is going in a negative direction, which is up and it hits the upper part, well, a negative number times a negative number is a positive number. And then if it's going in the, uh, if it's going down, it would be, the ball would be, go, the V speed would be in a positive direction. And if we multiply that by negative one, a positive number times a negative number is a negative number. So it's gonna shoot it back up. So if you don't understand that, uh, go ahead and read a couple math books. Uh, it's, it shouldn't be too difficult though to understand. So, so then also we're just gonna say if, so, so that's basically going to take care of our up and down. Now we need to see if it's gonna go, say for example, our player doesn't hit the ball and it passes the paddle, they missed it. It's go, we're just gonna have the ball reset. There's not gonna be a score or anything like that unless you want me to do that next part of the um, you know more advanced Pong type of game. But we're not gonna be any score, it's just gonna reset. So basically all we have to do is say, if X is less than or equal to zero, or x is greater than or equal to room width, which is basically just saying if it passed the paddles, then we're just gonna say x equals x start, which is an inbuilt very, uh, function in Game Maker, and y equals y start. And that's just going to set our x and y coordinates of our ball back to its original starting position where we set it in the room. And we want to re-randomize our speeds so we just do that and it completely re-randomizes how the ball will start off right so there you go that is basically it so let's go ahead and oh also when we go ahead and let's do collision with object paddle we just say h speed times equals negative one the same concept we had for the v speed right so let's go ahead and let's see if it's in the room yes it is so let's go ahead and run it. So as you can see, it starts off. Oh, and if it passes the paddle, it restarts and it starts in a random direction. If we go ahead and hit it, it now bounces off our paddle. Very, very cool. So that is the very basics of a Pong game. As you can see, it's off at random speeds there, which is pretty cool. All right, so that's gonna be it for today. Go ahead and leave a like, go and subscribe. Let's go ahead and try for 100 likes this time. And I hope you guys learned something. Let me know if you guys want, uh, say another sort of Pong game or, or more advanced Pong game that you guys would like to see. I hope this helped you guys and, uh, and let me know. So. Go leave a like, go and subscribe if this video helped you out, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace.